Hey everyone, welcome back to Josh Wall Trades. In my last video, I did my first scan and my initial impressions of this 3D Maker Pro Lynx scanner. If you didn't watch that video, feel free to go back and check it out. Uh, but essentially, I reached out to 3D Maker Pro asking if they would be willing to send me a scanner that I could review and just kind of put through its paces and see what they're capable of. And uh, my initial scan was fairly simple. It was an alternator bracket. Um, I was more or less impressed with the data that it took, especially for the price. And uh, now I really want to put this scanner to the test by scanning this engine and transmission combo, scanning the engine bay and trans tunnel of that car, and using that data to create a 3D digital assembly and drive the design of the engine mounts, the transmission mounts, the oil pan, as well as check for interferences and other issues that I may run into, uh, which I'm sure I will. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is scan this motor, show you the process, and um, go through getting the 3D data assembled into one model so that you have a mesh representing this transmission and engine combo. And a little bit of information on this motor and the car, this is a Nissan Titan BK56DE, and this is a 370Z 6P transmission. I've got them mated together, and they're going into a 1991 Nissan T40SX hatchback, which is an S13 model. Uh, I used to drift this car. Um, I drifted for about eight years prior to getting my job at Honda, where I started moving towards professional circuit racing. Um, and uh, it's been kind of hanging out ever since then. And my friends are definitely going to be in the comment section giving me a hard time about this because I started this project when I was still in college. And I've been out of college for like 11 years or more now. I don't want to count. But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to show you the process of scanning this and we'll get going. Alright, so as we start scanning this motor and transmission combo, you're going to want to find your ideal standoff distance, which is about right here. Um, you're going to want to keep this distance at all times. It's where you're going to get the best kind of data because it's the optimal measuring volume range of the 3D scanner. And you're going to want to start in the middle and kind of build out. So the thing about 3D scanning is that it's like stacking paper. Eventually, you're going to end up with deviation. So uh, if you start in the middle, you push all your deviation to the very far outside and you help minimize the change. Whereas if you start at the front and work your way to the back, you're going to stack up deviation and uh, you're going to run into accuracy issues on the far end of the scan. So starting in the middle, you're going to minimize your volumetric error of the scan. So we're going to go ahead and get this going and uh, uh, kind of see how it does. All right, for this first scan, what I'm doing is I'm starting in the middle, like I said, and just kind of building my way out. This is the first large object I've scanned with this scanner, and you can see uh, off and on I struggle with keeping tracking. Um, this is fairly common whenever you have uh, geometry-driven alignments as opposed to having target recognition. So what it's doing is it's looking for geometry to fit each individual scan to. Um, but you can see as long as you move slow, it does fairly well, but uh, any quick or large movements, it has a hard time tracking that sort of thing. Um, so it's got a measuring volume of about 250 millimeters by 400 millimeters, and uh, that's fairly small for scanning larger things. Um, as you can see, you can definitely do it. You just have to kind of take your time. And as I start scanning this transmission, I end up with some overlapping data that I'll have to address here in just a second. All right, so I noticed when I was doing the scan that I had some misaligning data as I was scanning the transmission. And um, that's fairly common when you only rely on geometry to fit because when it lost tracking, it found something where it thought that it was close enough and then it kept building up from there. And the only issue with that in this software, there's not a way to go back in and say, hey, of all of this floating data, all the shots tied to this, select those and delete them. Um, so what I wound up doing is I cut out the transmission. Essentially, I, I drew a line right here and cut all that out and deleted it. 
um, because I had floating data, I had ribs not lining up and bolts uh, not lining up as well. Um, that kind of stuff you want to catch and stop. And I'm actually going to change up my strategy on this. Instead of trying to scan a bunch at once, um, one, it'll help with process time, and two, um, it'll help the scanner out a little bit. Um, I'm going to scan it in chunks, but I'm going to get enough overlapping data onto the engine part that I do have data on and um, use that to line everything up. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, give it a shot. All right, so on this scan, you can see I kind of start in the middle again, and I just work my way down the transmission. Um, one of the things that I wound up doing on this is actually upping the brightness of the scan to help it bring in some of those darker areas. Um, it was scanning in very well for uh, being on default settings, mainly because it's been sitting so long, it's got a nice layer of dust that kind of takes some of the darkness away and some of the shine away. But I noticed it wasn't quite scanning in as good. And I, right there, I just bumped up the uh, brightness of the scan. And you can see it is pulling in all of the dark areas very, very well. This wound up being becoming the uh, kind of default that I used to scan because it did well on the shinier stuff and it did well on the dark stuff as well. So uh, you can see I'm kind of approaching the 6,000 frame limit. I found that 7,000 is about the max that my computer and this software can handle. So I stop it there. All right, so as I was stopping the last scan, um, I hit stop scan and the program crashed. So I lost that scan, but now that I know that I want to stop scanning when I hit about 7,000 frames, um, and I want to start off with a higher brightness setting to help kind of bring everything in together. So um, I'm actually going to attempt to do that again. And again, I'm going to start in the middle and kind of build my way out, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so take two. Uh, kind of using the same strategy I've been using, starting in the middle, working my way out. And you can see immediately uh, the data coming in is a lot better with the higher brightness settings. Um, biggest thing that I've learned doing this is that you have to be very careful with your movements um, in order not to lose tracking. And uh, if you do lose tracking, it has to go back to the area that has the most data, which I found is pretty much exactly where you first started. And so this scan, as you can see, is going super well. Uh, it's pulling in a lot of really good data. Those pulleys were black and shiny. Um, and you can see it pulled them in no problem. And right there, wrapping around anything while you're 3D scanning is always a trick. So you want to make sure that you have uh, good data as you transition from one side to the other. And uh, if you can slow that down, it'll turn out pretty good. So here is that scan you just watched me do. Um, you can see it's scanned in very well. Um, what you're seeing here, the kind of like messiness is point cloud noise. There'll be floating little points, things like that from reflections. Um, the higher your brightness, the more kind of floating data that you're going to get. That's fairly common with um, the raw point cloud data. As you process it, the software does a noise reduction and overall mesh cleanup. But you can see with that higher brightness, I was able to pull in the valve covers, the adapter plate, and the shifter cover, all of which are black and or shiny, um, which is notoriously very difficult to scan. Even these pulleys, you know, uh, all of those were painted black and shiny. And so that stuff scanned in very well. I'm sure the layer of dust from years of sitting definitely helped with that. But uh, overall, even in the cleaned off areas, it scanned in very well. So I'm fairly happy with this. Um, I've got a couple more scans that I need to do at this point. So I'm just going to queue them up into an epic scanning montage.
here we have the completed model loaded into GOM Inspect 2018. Unfortunately, the processing video did not save and is lost to time. Uh, the program wasn't able to automatically align all the scans together, so I had to use a three-point alignment to help it out, uh, which actually worked out very well. I ended up with a very nice model. And what I'm doing here is that I'm thinning or decimating the mesh to a surface tolerance of 10 thou in order to reduce a poly count from almost 1.9 million points to under 500,000. This greatly reduces the file size with minimal detail loss. So here is the final mesh. You can see that the water pump fell victim to the mesh cleanup since there was no data connecting it to the rest of the scan. This is okay as I can always do another scan and add it in at a later date if needed. One of the areas that I'm impressed with was the underside where there was light oil coverage. It actually got decent data there as this is typically a struggle point in general. With brightness adjustments, I was able to bring both dark and shiny surfaces in as well. One other trouble spot was the drive shaft collar got some overlapped and offset data. This is probably due to a scan floating in space with poor alignment. Slowing down while scanning this technical area probably would have helped. And you can also see that the bolt holes for the transmission mount and engine mounts kind of filled themselves in, but you can kind of see a relief where they were. In order to get exact location, I'll go back and rescan that area with bolts installed to get their locations. But overall, this is a very detailed and usable scan with minimal areas needing rescanning. The link scanner did a very good job of putting all the data together into something quite usable.